So I'm Joaquin Baruch. I'm an epidemiologist with the EPIET program. I applied to a call for assistance for the Ebola outbreak in Guinea in 2021, and I got redirected to a mission to support the setting up of COVID-19 surveillance and contact tracing in the refugee camps in uh, Western Algeria and the border between Algeria, Mauritania. The the reason why I went there was because I, I really liked the, the setting and the mission. It was to do something that I was really passionate about, which was setting up um, surveillance systems and contact tracing and to build capacity in, in, those, uh, in that community. And one of the advantages that I had was that they required some of the spoke French and Spanish because the refugees are from the, a former Spanish colony, so they speak uh, Spanish as well as Arabic, and then the team in Algeria speaks French. The, as I mentioned, why I went there was to set up uh, the COVID-19 surveillance system that was already set up on paper to put it electronically with the Go Data team, which is a team at WHO um, that supports the implementation of this tool for uh, primarily contact tracing and, and case management. Uh, most of my work was with the different hospitals within the refugee camps. So the camp is divided into five camps, and then each one of those has its own uh, hospital. And then part of my work was going through the main uh, facilities of the, the health authorities to each one of these hospitals to train the, the personnel that they have on how to conduct contact tracing and how to conduct case management. So a lot of it was mapping exercise and assessing the needs that they had for both training and how to carry on their surveillance activities and, and therefore conduct that training. Um, the, therefore, most of my day was uh, waking up early, uh, getting in the convoy uh, that would drive from the city of Tinduf, which was where I was based, together with a team normally from UNHCR, which is a UN refugee agency. Uh, myself, maybe someone from WHO, depending on the, uh, the timelines. And then we would drive about 20 kilometers or, or so to the camps. And the challenges, I think, were resource constrained, as you can imagine, but they were readily easily overcome by the fact that they had people that had been trained and that could conduct the, the activities that they needed. So the, the pandemic situation when I arrived was at an increasing point. They had not seen that many cases because it's a, such an isolated community and the Algerian government had closed their borders throughout most of the first year of the pandemic. And therefore, that, not that many cases had arrived to the, the camp. Now, when I got there, cases uh, were just starting to increase. And then I think I stayed until they got to the top of the of the wave there. And, and that really put a strain into our situation. And even I got COVID during that time um, in the camps. And, it's, and, and you could see how the system that we were putting in place was really making their work much simpler. Because before it was a lot of uh, paper base going from the hospital to the central level. And then with the system that we put in place, it was all automatic. So then they were able to have daily uh, updates on what was the case count in each different of the camps. They were able to calculate the incidence of cases and through that information, make decisions that were based on data. This was a project led by WHO to implement a surveillance system. And the country office had been working with the refugees for many years. Uh, but this project did not start when I arrived. They had already done training with them and they had worked with them quite a bit. So then when I arrived there was really the final stage of the implementation and it wouldn't have been possible without all the backbone work that was done by country office, uh, the support from the WHO headquarters, and then the support that country office provided while I was there as well.